if the Red Dragon Project hadn't died, would we have gone to Mars sooner? This is a question placed several years after the death of SpaceX's project, the Red Dragon to Mars. Revealed in 2016, the project promises to leverage SpaceX to launch the first Red Planet pioneers by 2024. Unfortunately, shortly after that, the company itself pulled the plug on its plans due to technological issues and the desire to shift to a more potential one. However, everything is not as simple as what you saw. Behind the scenes is a long story of politics that NASA doesn't want you to know about. So what exactly happened to this passionate project of SpaceX? In 2016, SpaceX cooperated with NASA under things so-called SpaceX's planned 2018 Mars mission. The company aimed to launch one of its uncrewed Dragon capsules toward the Red Planet in May 2018 to test out some of the technologies needed to make SpaceX's ambitious Mars colonization goal a reality. The Dragon concept for this case is called Red Dragon. One of those technologies is supersonic retropulsion. Dragon would hit the Martian atmosphere going far faster than the speed of sound. The capsule would use its onboard Super Draco thrusters, rather than parachutes, to slow down enough to land. NASA views the strategy as key to enabling human Mars missions, which will require putting extremely heavy payloads, such as habitat modules, down on the planet's surface. Because this was essentially a win-win collaboration, thus, the National Agency did not fund the project. The idea was a split-cost mission, where SpaceX fronted a lot of the R&D money and NASA paid a fixed price to ride along some science equipment, do a one-off conversion of a Dragon capsule to land some science experiments on Mars, with SpaceX getting essentially free R&D money out of it because it's 90% work they wanted to do anyway. Whereas NASA would receive most of SpaceX's entry, descent, and landing flight data, it can be said that, by then, NASA relied heavily on SpaceX for this mission, given that they did not have one on the books, so no funding or even a proposition. Additionally, SpaceX seems to be the only unit chasing the idea of Mars colonization from the beginning. At least they had done R&D carefully in terms of technology and means. At that time, Falcon Heavy was under development, but the 2018 mission relied on Dragon and the Falcon Heavy rocket for the uncrewed tasks. SpaceX's crewed Mars efforts would employ an entirely different architecture known as the Interplanetary Transport System, ITS or Starship as we know it today. Everything seems to be perfect as SpaceX planned extremely carefully and they were free to implement their plans due to financial autonomy. Nevertheless, this is when the matters emerged. Indeed, a year later, SpaceX announced the cancellation of both the Red Dragon concept and its plans to send an uncrewed version of the Dragon spacecraft to Mars. So what exactly happened? Speaking to the public, Musk confirmed that the company was no longer working to land Dragon propulsively for commercial crew. On July 19, 2017, at the International Space Station Research and Development Conference, Elon Musk let the cat out of his bag, giving an update about Dragon 2. Dragon 2 is capable of landing propulsively. It, it, technically, it still, it still is. We've deleted the little legs that pop out of the heat shield, but it's technically still capable of doing it. The reason we decided not to pursue that heavily is it would have taken a, a tremendous amount of effort to qualify that for safety, uh, particularly for crew, uh, crew transport. And then uh, there was a time when I thought that the Dragon approach to landing on Mars, we've got a base heat shield and side-mounted thrusters would be the right way to land on Mars. But um, now I've... I'm pretty confident that is not the right way and that there's a, there's a, there's a far better approach. And, um, and that, that's what the next generation of uh, SpaceX rockets and spacecraft uh, is, is going to do. The decision means SpaceX's Dragon capsules would stick to landing with parachutes here on Earth, too. That's the method that SpaceX was using to land its cargo Dragon capsule. By then, the company was working on an updated version of the capsule called Dragon 2, that would eventually carry people back and forth from the ISS and SpaceX, hope to have that vehicle land propulsively with people on board. Musk said later that was not going to happen since the company would not be adding landing legs to the Dragon 2. The concept of landing gear was applied on the space shuttle, and the error in this system to date is still an alarm in the qualification of human and cargo safety. The propulsive landing technique may have simply been too difficult to develop for carrying a crew on Dragon, 
Nevertheless, as Elon said, technically Dragon 2 was still capable of landing propulsively. That's because the engines it would need to do the landing will still be installed on the capsule. The engines are crucial for the Dragon's abort system. They can fire up if there's an emergency during launch and carry the capsule and its crew up and away to safety. However, without landing legs, landing with the engines would be extra difficult to pull off. You'd have to land it on some pretty soft landing pad, he said. In addition, this method usually requires a huge cost of trying to research, develop, and certify an Earth propulsive landing. That expenditure even outweighs the money to send out a ship and helicopter to recover the vehicle for an ocean splashdown. But Red Dragon is just a cargo version. Is there any link between the Red Dragon and those reasons? Yeah, such a good question. Keep in mind, as Elon stated, landing a capsule on Mars is not the best way to land on Mars. So they came up with the idea of an interplanetary transportation system, or a big Falcon ship. The way this new system re-enters and lands looked nothing like how a Dragon capsule does. More importantly, Dragon is dedicated to the ISS destination, while ITS or Starship is a more refined and focused vehicle for interplanetary missions. For that reason, between investing in a project like ITS from scratch that advances the long-term goals and taking a risk at a short-term project like Red Dragon, which is more optimal, Okay, I hope you understand what I have already said, but don't forget that they are just the tip of the iceberg. According to those who are familiar with the project, there is a still hidden corner that fewer people know. It's about the political matter. The Red Dragon and its missions got abandoned for political reasons as it would have shown a commercial capsule to be more capable than Orion, which for a so-called deep exploration vehicle was pathetically unable to achieve any of the goals set for the Red Dragon mission. Can't have NASA or Lockheed Martin look bad, that just won't do. SpaceX was at the time trying to win more government launch contracts for the Falcon 9 and a continuation of the commercial resupply and commercial crew contracts, which represented a much bigger prize than a one-off Mars science mission. Rumor is that certain key senators and Congress critters that are recipients of large amounts of aerospace lobbying dollars phoned up Elon and NASA administration and stated in no uncertain terms that if Red Dragon happened, then those programs would be zeroed out and SpaceX would never see a dime of government money again. Certainly, the project died a very quick death before it even got off the ground, with NASA people working on it reassigned to other projects and not a peep out of Elon on the topic until years later. SpaceX would later decide that the Super Draco landing approach wasn't working and go back to the tried-and-true parachutes and water recovery EDL or entry descent and landing architecture, but that was years after this version of Red Dragon was dead and buried. So, to answer the initial question, if the Red Dragon project hadn't died, would we have gone to Mars sooner? My guess is no, because the success of a project requires various factors in addition to the sustainable financial resource, the support of the government agencies also plays an important role here. But who cares about the past anymore because currently Elon's new project, Starship, is progressing very well. I'm pretty sure that once Starship comes online, Elon Musk will say loudly, screw you guys, I'm going to Mars myself and humiliate the out of you. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. If you want to explore more aspects of the world's most powerful rockets and the world of rockets in general, here is a selection of deeper dive videos for you. Thank you and we look forward to seeing you next time.